Hi everyone and welcome back to the Crafty Yellow Camper and today I'm going to show you a card made with one of the celebration stamp sets. Now this is a two-step stamp set so I'm pretty sure I haven't got my catalogue actually at the moment I've lent that to somebody else but I'm pretty sure this is a £90 spend stamp set because you get two sets of stamps. I've already pulled some out um, but there's some really nice stamps in this set. I'm not sure what this flower is called. I want to say a calendula, but I'm not sure. So um, if you know what it is, drop me a comment. <laughs> okay, so we've got, uh, as I said, it's a two-step stamping set. So we've got the basic line image of this main um, sort of uh, sprig, if you like, of flowers with a bud and um, one coming out and the full flowers. And then you've got this little individual flower. Um, and then what you've got is the stamps to colour them in, if you like. So this is the main part of this flower here. These little bits are for up here. Um, and these little bits do these little uh, bits on the flowers there. Then you've got, uh, for this individual one, you've got that's the main flower. And this does the little green uh, bottom of the Actually, I suppose they look a bit like, um, oh, grow them in window boxes, don't you? And I can't think what they're called. And you have to keep deadheading them to keep them coming back. They're not petunias. Uh, anyway, and this is the little um, bud and the little flower stem. And the leaves obviously go on this one. And then there's some, that's the random bud for there. Um, then what I did particularly like, there's a tiny little bee. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm filming at night. It's a bit pitch black outside, so um, you might get a little bit of glare off my lamp. Um, and then there are some really nice sentiments. So there's for a feeling better kind of day, which would be really good. Somebody that's going through a rough time or somebody that's been ill. Sending happy thoughts for a very happy birthday. Kindness matters. Thank you. And you are easy to love. So you've got lots of uh, lots of options for cards there. And then you've got this little bit of um, sort of dottage um, or fleck, if you want. <laughs> anyway, those are always good for background stamps. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of different techniques with this card. Um, and the first thing we're going to do. So this, um, obviously, I don't have any um, designer series paper that coordinates with this. Uh, the um, One of the other sets we used, obviously one of the celebration offers was the um, designer series paper that went with the stamp set and dies that you could purchase, the um, Dainty Delight one. Um, this one doesn't, but I wanna show you how you can very easily use this set to make your own papers. Now you could do this as a whole sheet <clears throat> um, if you were gonna make multiple cards, but just for the swiftness of tonight, I'm just gonna use um, one piece so i'll bring in my cardstock so i'm using a piece of sweet sorbet uh this is from the um in colors sorry you'll have to excuse me it's getting late i've had a long day and i'm tired um this is from the in colors that will stay with us when the new catalog comes out in the summer in june um because it's with the most recent set of in colors so we always have two sets of in colours running at the same time. And then um, we have a new set each year. So each set runs for two years. And then when one retires, we get a new set. Well, and then that will last for two years. So there's, there's a set that retires every year in the annual catalogue, but we get a new set every year. So we have always got two sets of in colours at any one point. Okay, so I'll just talk you through my cardstock. So this is a, a basic C6 base, but instead of cutting it, and folding it on this edge it's folded across the top so it's half of a A4 sheet if you're in the UK or anywhere else that uses A4 you could replicate this card by using half of a sheet of I think you call it letter size if you're in the States or any of the other countries that use that and then I've basically for the sake of this this is cut at 10 and a half and scored at 14.8 um, and that then gives us a tent fold card Okay, so I've then cut two pieces of basic white. Uh, the bigger one, I'm just going to check my measurements so I don't tell you wrongly. The bigger one is cut at 12 and a half by 8 centimetres. 
and the smaller one is 10 and a half by seven centimeters. This is the one that we're going to use. We're going we're going to set those at an angle on our card. So the bigger one is the one that is going to effectively be our backing paper. But you don't have to cut it to this size. If you wanted to do the whole front, um, the mat layer for that would be um, 10 by 14.3. And then you would just have a small border of cardstock around the edge. But I'm going to do it like this just because I fancy a change. So we're what we're going to do is we're going to use um, the bigger stamp but we're not going to colour it in, if you like, with the other stamp. So we just get a, like a line drawing. And you can see I've just sort of tested it here on my piece of scrap paper. So we want it to be random. We don't really want it to be just in the middle because we're going to cover part of that up. So I've just inked up my stamp. Um, and I'm just going to randomly stamp that over... Oh, that didn't come out very well, but we can cover that up. I'm just going to randomly stamp that over the sheet. And that effectively gives us a bit of backing paper. So if, you're ever, if you've ever got a stamp set and you don't have any DSP to go with it, use some of the coordinating colours for your card and just use some of the stamps just to give you a bit of a... Um, a bit of a background now i'm not going to stamp anything in the middle that would have been the ideal place to put some of the dots but um we're not going to see it that's going to be covered up so i'm just going to get the dots out these little dotty stamps are always really great for um filling in areas my recommendation is if you're using a small stamp use a small block and then you shouldn't get too much ink on the block she says this is a very juicy ink pad because I haven't really used it much it's not one of my fave colors but it works for tonight so we're just gonna add a little bit of the dots randomly I will put some in the middle just purely so you can see how they fill in the gaps if in doubt do it anyway and if it's covered up it's covered up but if it isn't it isn't there we go. So oh, I'll just put some up this top corner, I think, just to fill that in a bit more. OK, so that's our basically our um, backing paper, if you will. And then that is going to be mounted on to the front of our card at an angle. And I haven't decided which angle yet, quite possibly that way, but it might go that way. So I'm not going to stick that on for now. So let's put that. To, oh, before I do that, I just want to add a little bit of extra texture. So what I'm going to do um, I will have to ask for you to bear with me. I do usually do this before I start filming, but I'm just going to run it through the time-worn type embossing folder. So I'm just going to put that in. So when you're using an embossing folder, don't put it too near the top because you can see there's a blank piece there with no actual embossing on and you don't want a line. So always go for the middle um, unless you want a particular area and always have the stamping up label on the front. Okay, so if you'll excuse me for two seconds, I'll just chat to you while I go over to my die cutting machine. And I'm just changing the plates around so I've got the right ones for embossing. So I'm just going to quickly, oh, no, wrong one. <laughs> it's a 3D folder. I always get my plates in the wrong order for those. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, that's too easy. I need a bigger craft room really. I took over my daughter's bedroom when she moved out. Um, and um, it's a bigger room, much bigger room than I used to have, but um, for some reason I still managed to fill it up. I think how, when you're a crafter, however big a craft room you're in, you will always manage to fill up the space. The problem is with myself is that I don't just don't just do stamping up. So I have lots of other hobbies as well. So there's sewing machines and fabric and uh, 
silk painting stuff and right anyway enough of all that so i've just run that through the embossing folder and that just gives that hopefully you can see that just gives that a little bit more texture and because it's a time worn type folder it's automatically got the text on it but it's got those sort of well time worn uh, patches on it and that just adds a little bit of something so we're going to put that to one side for now and then we'll come back to our main image so with the smaller piece of card we're going to stamp our image and this time we are going to color it in so what we need to do i'm just wondering whether i would be better to use the stamp so I think we might well be. So I'm just going to clean my stamps off on the blocks. Obviously, you don't want to use the stamp for making a background because you need to be able to twist and turn your images. Oh my, that really is a juicy, uh, juicy block. Obviously, really haven't used it much. Okay, so let's clean those up. Um, so I'm going to bring in the stamp for this. Okay, I think this will just make it easier to line it all up. So we're going to use this big image again. And I'm going to rest it down on my piece of cardstock. Now you can see that my piece of cardstock is slightly smaller, but that doesn't matter if it goes a little bit off the edge. Okay, and I'm just going to close that down. Now because I probably haven't cleaned that very well, we're going to get, oh, obviously cleaned it better than I thought. Um, I thought we were going to get a bit of an impression under there. So I'm just going to slide the stamp case under there just to give me something. So I'm not putting too much pressure on the hinges here when I ink up my stamp. So I'm just going to do my image. And again, using the stamp apparatus gives us the option. Can you see here it hasn't stamped properly? So I can put that down, give that another press. And we've got our image nice and clear. We're just missing the edge of that leaf, but I think that's because of the magnet. So I'm just going to move that over there. There we are. Okay. So what we can do now, I'm just going to get my chamois out and give my, um, my chamois needs a bit of a rinse. <sighs> These darker um, colours seem to spread a lot further okay so what we need to do now is we need to take off this stamp and we need to come back in with the ones that fill in so Stampin' Up have made it easy for us in that they've put the fill in ones on a separate sheet of acetate so let's get rid of that one just put that over there for now now we need the flowers to fill in so we know that they are this one now this is where the stamparate stamparatus comes into its own because you can line up onto the image we've already stamped close it up and pick it up but just make sure that you realign your piece of cardstock um, when you do that okay let's just double check yeah, so this time when we ink it up, it should fill it in for us. Okay, so what we're going to do, just gently ink that up, press it down. Obviously, didn't press hard enough. There we are, and it's filled that in for us. Can you, if I lift that up, can you see? So it's put the detail in to the flowers for us. And if you notice, it hasn't done... The little green bits at the bottom we're going to have to do those ourselves so we take that one off of there just lob that on a block i tend to keep a spare block on my desk for putting photopolymer stamps on because they stick to everything you you suddenly realize that you're you're missing one and you search your desk can't find it anywhere and then realize it's stuck to the underneath of the stamp set your elbow um yeah all sorts so right what we all what we need to do now we need to fill in these buds here and that is the stamp for that and you can see it's got the little green part for the bottom of the flower and it's also got these buds and that little 
flower bit there. So again, with the photopolymer, you can see where to line them up because you can see through them. So that's that. So that's telling me that that needs to be in a different colour. So I think what we're going to do with that is bring in some pear pizzazz. So obviously this particular flower, the buds when they're shut are green on the outside and then they open up to reveal the flower and that's where you get this little green bit here. So we've got some pear pizzazz. I've already lined that up. Let's give that a little rub. Now, because we've stamped the whole thing in red, that isn't dark enough and that is where the um, stamper just comes into its own. So I'm going to ink that and stamp that three times. Now, it's dark enough for this here, but I think these buds need to be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is fish out a slightly darker green. What shall we go for? We've got pear pizzazz. Well, mossy meadow. Yeah, I think mossy meadow might work quite nicely. I'm just going to close up this sweet sorbet because I know I'm going to get covered in it. But this time we need to be a little bit careful about where we put it because I want these crowns of the flowers to stay the same colour. We just want it on this, um, this part here. So what I'm going to do is bring in my blending brush, I think, pick up a little bit of green and just carefully brush that on the bits we want it on. Um, there's one there, isn't there? Now, what you can do is ink up your stamp on your Stamparatus plate and then you can always wipe off any ink. Let's see how that goes. I'm just pressing down on the area that we want it. There, now that's just given us a little bit of darker and a little bit more shading. And we just want a little bit more at the bottom, I think. There we go. I like that. Okay, now it might not look much different, but you can, you can see it. So actually, I'm going to keep that mossy meadow out because we now need to do these stamps. And we know that these stamps, these leaves... And we know they need to be quite a lot darker. So I'm going to remove the stamp that we've got for the uh, buds. And I'm going to bring in the leaves. So this one stamp does these four leaves down here at the bottom. So again, we can see through them, which makes them a lot easier to line up. This is where photopolymer really comes into its own. So... You probably can't pick up on the camera, but I'm using the edge of the stamp to line up with our outline edge. Okay, let's give that a go. Pick up the stamp. As I said, you can really see how the Stamper Art just comes into its own for this kind of technique. Now, we're going to go straight in this time with the Mossy Meadow on the, on the actual stamp itself because we want a lot more colour. And again, this is where the Stamparatus comes in handy because you can build up the layers of colour um, by repeat stamping. There we go, we're getting darker. And you can see that's just slightly out on that one. I can't, ordinarily I'd get my head right over it, but I would have my head under the camera. So that doesn't really work, but... I actually quite like the pink. It almost makes the veins of the leaves stand out a bit more. Right, we might have to go one shade darker on here. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's several inkings and you can see it's starting to get darker. So let's do it again. Give it a good rub. Yeah, that's better. We're now getting the darker green. But I probably should have just started off with a slightly darker one. That's better. So you can see how you can build up the colour by using um, repeatedly stamping. That's left my plate in a right mess. But you'll also notice that none of this ink has transferred onto my image because um, the stamps are raised away from it. OK, so I'm just going to take that out of there. Now, what I want to do is add a little bit of um, colour 
to the edges of these. So I'm going to do the smaller one first for the reason that we've got a lot of ink on this plate. So I'm just going to pick up this the ink off this plate. And you can do this as well with your stamps. If you've used a stamp and there's still ink on it and you need to do a bit of blending, then pick it up rather than waste it. Now, all I'm going to do is just go very gently. You can see how much ink was left on that plate look. I'm coming in a bit more on the corners and sticking very much to the edges on in between. And that just adds that little bit of colour which will differentiate between our sheets because obviously both of our sheets that we've got started off white. So you can see how that then brings that out from there. And on this one, um, what colour did I use on that? No, that's pear yeah. pizzazz. So we don't want, uh, not pear pizzazz, pear papaya. We need one for the sweet sorbet. I'm just gonna grab a clean brush. As I said on previous videos, we now do a smaller blending brush. I've already got these ones, so I haven't ordered them yet, but I will be ordering them because they are very good quality. And again, that I'm using that stamp and the block to pick up a bit of ink. And you can see how much ink was on that stamp when it looks clean. So these sort of colours do tend to stain um, photopolymer stamps. Need a little tiny bit more. You can see how that bit of ink has gone round the top. Let's just check there's no more on that stamp. No, we need a little bit more. So I'm going to take a little bit off the ink pad. Always start off so you don't get big splodges of colour, especially with a dark colour such as this. And we're just going to very gently go over. Oh, that's a bit dark. I'll just go around the edges with that. And then I am actually going to go over the whole thing just to take away that whiteness. And that gives us the matching colour to the cardstock base. There. And so that ties it in with the cardstock base, but it also makes it look a little bit more like um, design series paper. Okay, so let's start putting this card together. What have I done with the card base? I'm quite sure I'm not the only messy crafter <laughs> in the world. I am a bit messy. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is this is, was going to be our piece of, piece of DSP, if you like. So that's going to go there. Now, I think what we might do is have this one almost straight. So if we're going to get this one at as much of an angle as we can. And then we're going to just... Because it'll look, I think it'll look a bit funny if we put it on the side like that because the image will then be wrong. So I think what we'll do is put it like that. So it is juxtaposition or at a jaunty angle. So, right, so let's get some glue on the back of this. Again, I'll always say when you've um, got embossing folders, wet glue is the way to go. And Tombow is my go to glue only purely because the deboss side is there and that will give us something to grip now. I nearly went to stick that on straight. So we decided on pointing to the left corner. Obviously, if you're going to make a card like this, you need to cut your paper a little bit smaller because you can't have it hanging over the edge. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll raise this one up on some dimensionals. Yeah, you can't have your paper hanging over the edge, otherwise you won't be able to put it in an envelope. Okay, so we'll just pop some dimensionals on the back of this one. That'll just add a little bit of detail, I think. Okay. Thumbnail in the middle, lifts the edges. You can see why this is a really useful stamp set to have. So, obviously, we've made our own DSP, if you like. Um, and then we've used the two-step stamping process to colour in. I'm just going to have that like that so we get the most of our nice paper um yeah we've used our two-step stamping process here to do the line drawing and then the coloring in um but equally you could also do a, a decoupage or decoupage um style card as well so if we stamped this 
image again on just a piece of scrap white, coloured it in and then fussy cut it out, we could raise that up even more by adding another flower there, there, there and adding some extra leaves. So it's quite a useful stamp set, lots of different techniques that you can do with it. Okay, now we definitely need a gem in the middle of that flower. Uh, I think we might go for these opal rounds and just see if it's going to be the right size or whether it's going to be a bit big. So I'm just going to get my tweezers, lift it up. No, I think that is going to be perfect, actually. Get it in the right place. That's that on there. And then um, I think what we'll do is our usual trick with the uh, wink of Stella and just add a little bit onto the top layer and I'm just literally banging it against I mean some people use the lid like that I just find it easier to bang it against my hand sometimes right and there we go there's our finished card you could also if you want to add a little bit of twine to the card base um, oh actually we're not quite done are we? we've got to do the inside so what shall we put in the inside um, I think we might use the small flower on the inside. So um, we'll bring in that stamp apparatus again, I think. I'll just take those leaf stamps off there. I love those on my block. So I'll bring this in again, only purely because it's so much easier to line up for the inside of the card so we'll pop that little flower down there Oops. pick him up line our card up again ah now i must have got ink on the um magnets so we'll turn that over down okay so this time i'm just gonna go for um I'm just grabbing out my smoky slate because i don't want the lines to be as obvious okay now we need to find the one to color that one in don't we um, which is this this little one here so again, we use the flower, line it up, get it the right way up is always helpful. Um, in if any of you have this set, you can see there's just the middle of the flower there by my fingernail. So that helps us to line it up. So that's going to colour that middle bit in. Um, so we'll move this one over here now. Pick this one up. And again, it's pulled our cardstock up so... It will do this, you just need to put it back down, but it does make this easier in the long run. And we're just going to give this a little bit of the pink. Okay, that's that bit there. Oh, it's up a little bit high, I think. If I hadn't have already turned this over, we could have turned it over and had another go. And then we'll just come in with this little teeny one here. Obviously didn't line that up very well at all, did I? Never mind. It's a handmade card. Nobody said it has to be perfect. Get it as near as we can and I think that's acceptable. All right, so pick that up. Again, flatten our paper out. And then we need the green. So we'll go straight in with the mossy meadow this time, I think stamp's so small you almost can't see it on there there we go that's lined up a bit better okay so that's the middle of our card a very grubby apparatus so let's bring the card back in put some glue on the back of this and again on all my cards i don't add a greeting usually until i've decided who i'm going to send it to and sometimes i don't actually put a stamped greeting in i just write in it Let's line this up. Okay, so there's our little flower at the bottom. Now I've got a grubby mark on there. I think that's probably because of all the ink on my hands. So we'll just 
This is a Tombow rubber. And it just takes off, if you're very careful with it, it just takes off the very surface. So if you've got a bit of an ink splot, providing it's not too bad, you can get rid of it. So that's that's our inside. And that's the outside of our card. So I hope you like that card. I hope I've shown you a few techniques that you can use with um, with that stamp set. And I'll be back soon with more from, um, more from Stamping Up. Okay, that's it from me for now. Thanks for watching. Happy stamping and see you all again soon. Bye bye.